So you've seen the marketing hype around the new HDR mode on the Hasselblad X2D Mark II and you're wondering, does it really make a difference? We've all been there. You capture a glowing sunset, shimmering streetlights at night or a beautiful portrait, only to see the final image looking flat, dull and nothing like the moment you experienced. You lift the shadows, push the highlights, tweak every slider but it still doesn't shine the way you remember. Let me tell you, it's not your fault. There's something holding your images back. Something you may have never even considered. And today I'll show you how the Hasselblad X2D Mark II can unlock an entirely new dimension for your photography. If you're new here, my name is Albrecht Voss. I'm a full-time architectural photographer from Germany and Hasselblad Master winner with more than 15 years of experience in the field. On this channel I share the gear, techniques and stories behind my daily work. Photography is on the verge of a new revolution. And no, I'm not talking about artificial intelligence or augmented reality. This is about an entirely new way of displaying your images. One that makes them shine in a completely different light. More vibrant colors, deeper contrast and luminous highlights that reflect what you actually saw when you took the photo. How is this possible? And what role does the Hasselblad X2D Mark II play in it? That's exactly what I'll explain in this video. This episode was made with the kind support of Hasselblad, a brand that not only equips me with one of the best camera systems in the world that helps me share my experience as a long-time professional photographer with you and that fully independently. One of the biggest limitations of digital displays, whether it's TVs, computers, tablets or smartphones, has always been their restricted brightness range. Typical screens with 300 nits could only show about 6 to 8 stops of dynamic range, from pure black to pure white. Actually, that's very little compared to the 15 stops modern cameras like the X2D Mark II are capable of capturing. The revolution actually started around 2016 with TVs and their first high brightness HDR displays reaching 1000 nits and beyond. Apple followed in 2021, introducing some of the best HDR displays in all their M-series laptops. And today, nearly every smartphone uses HDR to improve visibility outdoors in direct sunlight. So, chances are you already have an HDR-capable screen at home. But what hasn't changed is our imagery. Most JPEGs still compress the 15 stops of capture detail into just 8 stops for display. Until now. With the Hasselblad X2D Mark II, you can now shoot HDR JPEGs and Hive files that fully unlock the brilliance of modern displays. And I can tell you, it's a completely new visual experience. To help you see the difference for yourself, I recorded this video in HDR. For best results, watch it on an HDR-capable monitor like your smartphone or TV. And if you're curious to see the images shown here in HDR, check out my Instagram for some examples. You can activate HDR recording in the image quality menu of the Hasselblad X2D. As mentioned earlier, this only works when you're shooting in JPEG or Hive format. Personally, I prefer Hive. It stores more image information at the same file size. And I always capture raw files alongside, in case I want to do more extensive editing later. If you're interested in my full workflow on how I convert raw files into HDR images using Lightroom, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Once you take a photo with these settings, the camera processes it with a short delay and creates an HDR image. You can then immediately view the results on the X2D's HDR-capable screen, a feature that, as of 2025, is still quite unique in the camera world. The large 3.6-inch rear display makes your images look absolutely stunning. To really take advantage of this effect, I recommend applying the expose to the right principle. That means exposing your image as brightly as possible without clipping the highlights. That's because HDR only affects the brightest part of your image. 
shadows and blacks remain the same as in your regular photos, but the histogram stretches further to the right and unlocks a whole new range of luminous highlights. HDR is especially powerful for high contrast scenes with bright areas, for example sunsets with glowing skies. It can also work well at night, especially with artificial light sources. But from my experience, these lights shouldn't be too small and pointy, otherwise the glowing effect can become a little distracting. At the moment, there are still a few limitations when shooting HDR images with the X2D Mark II. You'll have to give up continuous shooting and certain metering modes, which to be honest isn't a big deal. What's more unfortunate is that manual mode and flash photography are not supported for HDR captures. That means you're limited to aperture priority, shutter priority or full auto modes when using the in-camera HDR feature. Even with those constraints it's absolutely usable. You just have to know how to work with the system. During my recent workshop in southern Spain I shot all my images as HDRs. So let's take a look at a few examples inside Focus Mobile 2 on the iPhone. The HDR feature in the Hasselblad X2D Mark II is especially useful when you want to share images quickly, without heavy editing on the computer. At my workshop we often discussed our favorite shots from the day over dinner. So I simply paired the camera with my iPhone 11 Pro Max selected a few hives and transferred them in seconds. Focus Mobile will ask you which file types you want to import. Make sure to select the compressed JPEG hive images. Once you open an image for editing, a few differences are immediately noticeable. In the top right corner, a small HDR icon indicates the extended brightness range. And the histogram is split. Standard SDR on the left, and extended HDR highlights on the right. The grey out section shows tones your current display can't render yet. This is also affected by the brightness level you set on your screen. My recommendation is setting it to around 50% of its maximum brightness. So why not optimize one image together I shot of a church in Olberan. To make the image glow I push the brightness far to the right. Watch how the histogram shifts into the HDR zone. Then I increase the exposure just until it reaches the edge of the HDR histogram. Important, HDR images can still clip if pushed too far. Next I bring back the shadows with the tone curve. Add a bit of clarity, warmth, vibrance and a soft vignette. So let's check the before and after. Wow, not bad for a 30 megabyte file, isn't it? The image really comes to life. Now let's look at the twilight shot of Malaga. Ah, this one was captured in manual mode. So HDR editing isn't available for the hives and JPEGs. We will just revisit this photo in our next video where I use raw files in Lightroom. Instead, here's a street photo of a woman in a beautiful dress. I intentionally underexposed to protect the highlights. So I raise the exposure by almost two stops. Then I use an S curve for contrast. And again add warmth, vibrance and a vignette to bring out the Andalusian atmosphere. A quick crop removes some distracting edges. There wasn't much time to compose the shot probably, so it was taken on the fly from the hip. Again, the difference between before and after is striking, made with just a few adjustments. To sum up, when editing HDR images, make sure to fill the right hand HDR portion of the tone curve with as much visual information as possible. Use the brightness and exposure sliders to stretch the dynamic range. Be careful with the HDR recovery slider. It darkens bright pixels and can reduce the overall HDR impact. So, 
Where can you actually view your beautiful edited HDR images? As mentioned earlier, if you own a TV from the past 10 years, a MacBook Pro with an M1 chip or newer, or an iPad Pro with the M4, all of these devices support HDR, perfect for ultra immersive slideshows and vibrant memories. But also other smartphone companies offer this feature. When it comes to sharing your images online though, things get a bit more complicated. Even though most cameras and screens now support HDR, software platforms are still catching up. Instagram and threads have supported HDR posts since 2024, but only when uploaded directly from a smartphone, not from a computer, and they still have some bugs where sometimes the HDR feature isn't available after a few days after posting. Instagram stories don't display HDR brightness yet, and WhatsApp still renders everything in standard SDR. In short, as of late 2025, social media isn't quite ready for the HDR revolution. But on your own devices and when shared via AirDrop or similar tools, HDR images from the Hasselblad X2D really shine. So, next time you head out with your camera, try enabling the HDR mode and see how you like the glowing results. It's really addictive. Just remember to shoot in one of the automatic modes and without flash to activate the feature. If you'd like to learn more about HDR photography and mastering your Hasselblad, make sure to subscribe to this channel and visit my website. From the Hasselblad X2D setup guide to personal one-to-one -one coachings and photography trips, there's something for everyone. A big thank you to Hasselblad for supporting this video. Until next time, have fun shooting.